Thank you for joining us today. Today we'll be talking about passwordless authentication methods and to see if they're all the same. I am Miguel Fleckman, co-founder and CEO of Kitos, and uh, I've been fighting passwords ever since I started my career uh, at Microsoft. I, uh, first day of my career, I joined the team that was in charge of creating passwordless solutions for internal and external customers. After a few years, I left and co-founded Kitos, and now now we're here still with that goal with in conjunction with Microsoft to make the world a passwordless world. The reason for this is passwords are bad. I mean, the passwords themselves are not bad, but humans managing passwords are really bad. Um, ninety percent of starting by ninety percent of organizations experiencing a phishing attack in the last year. Um, so, and it doesn't matter. I, I, I see a lot of like, well, like education. Yes, education is a lot of a, a good mitigation, but it's not the end all be all because it doesn't matter how much you know about security. I know a lot of security people, security minded people that have been fished because you're tired, you, uh, you're stressed and you get that email that you fall for it. Um, and of course, the education is important and telling them to report it right away everything, but we have to kind of like remove that uh, from the equation, make it harder to get fished with technology. Also, 79% of uh, individuals reuse passwords. And let's be honest, the other 20, 21% is lying. Everybody reuses at least one password somewhere or anything. And um, the most shocking one is 46% of users store passwords in shared documents. So that means you have a shared Excel somewhere, and uh, it, all the all the employees are using that to access certain things, certain stuff. So we have to get rid of that because if someone gets access to that Excel, or they they leave the company and they take that with them. All of a sudden, they still have access. Um, so another reason is hackers love them because of the reasons we uh, talked. 60% of breaches start with a stolen credential. So, um, like, it is kind of the easiest way. Everybody thinks of like uh, this hard, like, hacker, like breaking encryption and everything. Honestly, the easiest way is they just find a credential somewhere and that's how they break in, or they fish someone, uh, trick someone into giving their access, and they do it. And ironically, 45% of people are, are the only ones that would change a password after a breach. A lot of people hear that their account got breached or that like somewhere where they use the same password gets breached and they don't go and change it. And the average person uses that same password 13 times. So like that's 13 accounts that the hacker can use the same username and try to get in. And credentials are huge in the black market. Six billion of them were leaked, uh, uh, leaked in 2021. One of the main things that I hear when people hear passwordless, they think like, well, it's more expensive, it's hard. And honestly, uh, it's cheaper. So Forrester uh, did a study and found that it is actually cheaper uh, with a 200% uh, uh, three-year ROI and actually pays for itself in 11 months. The reason for that is you decrease your help desk calls, um, and the cost, the $70 you see here, it's not only like, okay, less help desk uh, time or help desk people, but also pe uh, time that engineers and other employees lose when they have to either reset their password or they forget their password or um, something like that. It costs them that much time to reset a forgotten password or doing the, the yearly or quarterly resets. And also it's actually faster and more comfortable. Once you get used to like uh, passwordless authentication, it actually makes it easier and more comfortable to have to type your password and then go get the OTP, type that in and all that stuff. Um, another term we hear a lot is unfishable. So um, you will hear like unfishable credentials. What are unfishable credentials? And while it's a buzzword that I'm not a huge fan of, it has a, a significant meaning, and that's that you cannot give away your credential. You you cannot be tricked either by phone or by email or something to give away your credential. Uh, and here we have an image of how it would work. You might create a fake site 
um, and the person enters their username and password, uh, their OTP, and then the hacker uses that to actually access a real site. Um, with a FIDO2 key, a phone authentication, it actually makes it really hard because if you actually plug in a FIDO2 key and it's not the right domain, it's not going to give the, the credential. And also the credential never leaves a key. The private key never leaves a key or leaves a phone. So it is basically, I don't want to say impossible because there's other ways that you can go around it, but it makes it extremely hard to steal a credential. Actually, Google, when they moved to this type of credentials, they had zero account takeovers after a while when they did the study. So another reason to go passwordless, everybody's doing it. Over 50% of people are starting to implement some type of password list. Most common one is smartphone. The reason for that, everybody has one right here. So it is very easy to go and say, hey, everybody just download this application. It's something you carry around with you all the time. However, they're moving also to hardware keys, uh, such as UV keys or any other type of uh, FIDO2 slash smart card and built-in authenticators. Built-in authenticators in this case would be Windows Hello, Touch ID, and all those things that are included in your computer or cell phone. So uh, now we'll talk about the three main types. Um, the first one is phone, the most common one. That one, as I mentioned, you go into the site where you wanna go, uh, it'll say, hey, we'll send you a notification to your phone and, um, you're, you go to your phone and you approve. This one is very secure, very convenient. Uh, however, there is kind of like a pitfall and it's good enough for most cases. Don't, I don't want you to think like, oh no, like this is not good or anything. Um, th there is something called MFA fatigue and that actually there was an attack about it last year where um, a hacker kept kind of like sending push notifications to the user. And then they impersonated IT and said like, hey, we are having a problem. Can you just approve one and we're good to go? And that's how they got in. So there is that little extra kind of like ways that you can hack people. Uh, one way that they're mitigating that is you have to see the number in the screen and then select the number. So then it's either they have a 33% chance of guessing right, or uh, you actually have to see the number to, to approve. Uh, the next one is smart card authentication. Smart card authentication has been around for 20 years and it's kind of like the mother of all passwordless authentication. Governments have been using it for a while. Government contractors have been using it for a while and it's very comfortable. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about why it wasn't kind of, um, it didn't become as popular in a second, but basically how it works is you plug in that smart card, you enter your pin, the private key signs something and the server verifies that that something was signed with a private key of a certificate that was issued by a trusted certificate authority and has the username. So the key thing here is centralized key management. Now we have FIDO2, which is kind of like the evolution of smart cards. It was created and if you see it, it's very similar. You connect the device, you enter your PIN, the private key signs something, the server verifies that the key is registered to the user. That's the the, the difference. Uh, so in here, you're actually registering the key serial number, the key uh, hash to the server and each server where you're using this, I mean, usually if you have a centralized IDP, it's just there, but if you're using it, for example, for Azure AD and you're also using it for another service, Google or something, you would have to register it in both and uh, when the user leaves, uh, remove it in both places versus a smart card. Uh, you just create the certificate. If the user leaves, you revoke that certificate and anybody that is using smart card authentication will start banning that user. So there's a little bit of difference there. You might be thinking, why was FIDO2 created? Like smart card seems pretty good. It's centralized. It's easy to use. Well, it really wasn't that easy to use. Um, these are all the servers you needed to set up a, a smart card authentication. And that's why only governments and kind of like high security government contractors start using it because you need so many servers, so many things to just issue smart cards and authenticate to smart cards. While with FIDO2, you just need a database with the keys 
Um, so it was kind of created to make it easier to authenticate users and have it. So um, we have kind of here the difference, but then the government said with executive order uh, 1428, hey, we need smart card technology because it actually um, it actually has centralized, so we don't have to go and remove it from everywhere. So Microsoft had to work and create a cloud version of smart card authentication where you don't actually need uh, all this to be deployed. You could you just use Azure AD, so it becomes kind of the same as FIDO. And one of the main things that I forgot to mention at the beginning is usually when you join a webinar of a company, you're like, all right, what are they trying to sell, sell us? We don't care which uh, passwordless authentication you use. This is all informational because we actually support all three. So we're just here to make it easier for everybody and to choose what's best for you. And we'll talk a little bit more about how we do it internally. But yeah, so SmartCard and FIDO2, we actually use both just because there are some times that it's more comfortable to have a certificate. Sometimes it's more comfortable to have FIDO2. There are some parts of Microsoft that don't support FIDO2 authentication. And there are some parts of... Uh, Microsoft that don't support smart card authentication. So having both is a great asset. Uh, so here's my recommendation. My recommendation is all three. All three are good for certain things and are not so good for certain other things. So in Kitos, we actually have two different identities. So we have our corporate identity. Well, we actually have three, like we have our test for development, but we have our corporate identity and we have our production tenant. Our corporate identity has FIDO2, smart card, and phone authentication. The reason for that is we have uh, Teams and phones, and we have Outlook, and we have all these things that like you might want to have in your phone that it's more convenient to just enroll for phone authentication, be able to authenticate from your phone than to have to plug in a YubiKey to, to your phone. But we also have computers, and it's actually more comfortable to use FIDO2, so we issue all three. Uh, for the production tenant, we run PKI for large companies. So we cannot have uh, phone authentication because we cannot risk um, that MFA fatigue to compromise one of our engineers. So we just run SmartCard and FIDO2, and uh, it's really comfortable. I just carry around all my FIDO2 keys here and authenticate to whatever I have to authenticate depending on the identity. We actually go a little bit further. Uh, we have a blog post about it. We actually separate computers so you don't cross-contaminate and all that, but that's a, a topic for another discussion. So one key thing to remember from this webinar is you are as weak as your weakest link. So um, a lot of people say like, well, we have smart card authentication or we have this and then you, they also have enabled sms authentication hackers are not going to be like oh okay they have smart card we're, they're good they're going to find that weak link so if you still have sms authentication that's a downgrade attack so you might uh, act as a someone that lost a smart card and is recovering through sms so make sure you limit the authentication methods to only ones that you are comfortable with having um, and as I showed, there's three really good ones. So with those three, there's no reason to have any other authentication method. So you can go fully passwordless on the user authentication with just those three method, uh, methods. And um, it, it goes to the third point. It's actually more comfortable. One of the biggest hurdles with cybersecurity is not, oh, there is no technology, the, the encryption is not strong enough or something like that. It's just it's easier to share a password with everybody. So we actually make it easier to just not have a password and not have to remember it and not have to come up with a good password that you're not reusing anywhere anywhere else. Then it actually makes your company more secure. You can't, if if you make, if you use unfishable pass, uh, credentials, then your organization cannot get fished. So um, all those things come back into kind of like our IT role to make sure we're giving the users the right tools so they don't get compromised. And the last one is the secure onboarding experience. That that's where we have a lot of experience. Is if your onboarding experience is calling help desk and being like, hey, can I get a code to grade my card? I forgot it or something. That's not secure because it can be fished. It can be stolen. 
It can be social engineered from uh, attackers impersonating another employee. So you have to have a strong uh, onboarding experience, a secure with multi-factor onboarding experience, because if not, that becomes your weakest link. So it doesn't matter if you have smart cards, you have everything. And then for onboarding experience, you have something very weak. That's kind of the information. Now I want to open it to questions. I know Passwordless usually has a lot of questions, so please feel free to put them in the chat or in the Q&A section. Okay, and I see here one that is really good. If we're using Hello for Business and all the included authentication methods, do we still need a FIDO2 or a smart card or phone? And the answer to that is yes. While in the day-to-day, -day, your users are probably going to be using Hello for Business and that to authenticate and be kind of easy, you know, it's already on the laptop and it still meets the the two out of the three for multi-factor. So something you have, that credential is only on your laptop and something you know or something you are, depending whether it's a pin or phone or a face or a fingerprint. So it still meets the multi-factor uh, thing. However, when you're bootstrapping, it goes back to the weakest link. When you're bootstrapping a new laptop, if you're using a password, then that becomes your weakest link. So you still have to have that strong identity, an extra YubiKey uh, a a phone that you can use to authenticate into that laptop to bootstrap that laptop. And that also brings up another great point. Um, for backups, since we, are, we said no SMS or anything, you can either use a secondary hardware key or a phone plus hardware key. So there is many ways that you can have backups, for example, um, if you're using Authenticator and you run out of battery, you can carry around a, a, a key. Another deployment I've seen uh, with phones, for example, is C-level people or like very uh, kind of targeted people will get a FIDO2 key and more kind of security. And then people like maybe sales or customer service that might not be as targeted will just get the phone authentication. Then everybody's passwordless, so the company is still more secure. However, you're not having that upfront cost of buying hardware keys for everybody, or some people are not comfortable using them and there's a lot of training to it. So there is that kind of like mix and match to find kind of what's best. Any other questions? Okay, I think that will be it for today. Thank you guys so much for joining us today and I hope it gets you uh, one step closer to being passwordless. As always, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to set up a free identity assessment with one of our experts where we can talk a little bit more about your specific case and to help you go fully passwordless. Thank you and have a great rest of the day.